Over the last six years, the adolescent youth-friendly spaces have existed, making access to information on health services, contraceptives, and life income earning skills easier for young people. But this reality was only made possible through a partnership with the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, and the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport. Adolescent youth-friendly spaces can be found in seven of the ten administrative regions in Guyana. Friendly spaces are expected to provide young people with an opportunity to meet with each other and participate in recreational activities. During interaction, they would usually discuss different topics that include sexual and reproductive health, social and economic issues. In order to get an understanding of how effective and useful these youth-friendly spaces are, we visited several communities in Regions 4 and 6 where an evidence-based survey was conducted. Johanna Cecilia Site Coordinator Kenneth Pearson is the man that young people here look up to as a positive role model. Uh, so from my personal perspective, um, we are functioning quite very okay because we are fulfilling our plan accordingly and we are having a number of support from the community here, right? And we are looking forward for doing the plan a little bit more than in terms of a lot more programs by the Ministry of Health comes in our part because Over at Angois Avenue Adolescent Youth Friendly Space, when young people leave here, there is always a smile on their faces, thanks to Pinky Arthur. We have the job with a prevention program where I'm trained through the Ministry of Health and some other persons from the Youth Friendly Space. There's an ambient to see what is not done as they said it here. Shrub to lack prevention. We also have the family planning counseling whereby we go into the community and do family planning outreach that we meet, you know, outside outreach. Mm -hmm. This is with GRPA. And we have persons from Angla Isami who train you know, the young people of the school from the age of 16 to 25. With the senior staff, it's pretty security for the school skills training and all. So we go out and get also to be involved in the ministry of culture program. Get them involved in going to Coco College and also going to the Primary Service Center. Meet Elise Belfield, the site coordinator at the St. Sidwell's Adolescent Youth Friendly Space, who has a strong passion for working with young people. They have, they have got a new wealth of knowledge that they are taking out into the community also. They have been academically, persons are thirsting for more and we have been able to, to, to do our career guidance and have most of the youth going to tertiary um, institutions. Those who were undecided more or less you know, are able to, to focus and, and make that decision. Attitudinal change? Yes. Um, we had a program with Ms. Debbie Rappachan and she gave up, distributed a pin called the Attitude Pin. And henceforth, if somebody goes out the line, somebody will tell them they can't read the pin because they, they're going out the line. Because I her program, she said, look, every time you see them wearing the pin and you see them doing something that is 
unacceptable, remind them that they got to put the, they have to come back in line. Fourth, the knowledge have, the knowledge gained have tremendously benefited them. Even with, in terms of, of um, the teen sexuality, HIV and AIDS program, we find that the older ones are able to mentor the younger ones. It's not an easy task, but um, we have been able to talk to them. And what has been happening, we find they are communicating with the, with the older peer educators. The young ones are communicating with them. Hence, we are able to get the information so we can tackle problems along the way. Since the establishment of the Adolescent Youth Friendly Space Initiative in 2006, it has documented several achievements. We have successful out of the Youth Friendly Space. Um, the last year, we have five persons top to reach the secondary school on the road from the Youth Friendly Space. We award them a certificate. And if you look at the wall up there, that was in 2010. I the certificate of award we have out of the last year YST program, you know about that, the Ministry of Youth Interventions Skills 24 of Peru. Out of the 10, we have six persons who done very okay, we well, select Peru Peru, and the present day Peru From our area, and in my region, we march from and we hope in this year too that we can able to extend our registration. Uh, but for me particularly, um, the skills training is one of the important things now. Because in Blackwood, you know that um, things are happening, only farming and other things. And so, forth. so if it comes to a space like this, like little masonry or carpentry skills or something, it will be able to improve. It's not a lot of youths who are being, um, being trouble who were really abusive, abusive society, whereby they go steal for um steal from persons and so but since they come to the space they could be able to come and use the computer able to do different skills training session with them and we have open discussion on things that happen where they're able to speak out. Especially things we're not able to speak out to their parents at home, they will come and speak out here. So each and a different a change in life. They have they have got a new wealth of knowledge that they are taking out into the community also. They have been academically, persons are searching for more and we have been able to, to, to do our career guidance and have most of the youth going to tertiary um, institutions. Those who were undecided more or less are able to, to focus and, and make that decision. After change, yes. When we initially started our space, we had young people who were very shy. So most of us would have grown up with a tablet and talking about sexual reproductive health, sex practices, safe sex practices, etc. Now, given that we have been exposed to so much, we have quite a number of uh, young people who are approaching the topics of sex, questions about how to recognize HIV, committing themselves to different issues. Um, yeah, I had up to the other day a young girl told me that um, she is willing to come to our workshops and learn more about it because she feels that she's not being exposed enough to like, her reproductive health and all these things. But she's young, she's about 19 years old. And she, she says she needs a bit more information because she doesn't get to know she is. Um, the willingness also comes in terms of respecting we find a lot of young people who talk to them about how to carry themselves as a young person and be respectful towards your elders and stuff. You find that they are a bit more willing to do that. The friendly interactions among young people have caused positive changes in their lives and for those who previously engaged in negative and risky behaviors, it's a thing of the past. Okay, my name is Jenny. I've been with New Fat Fit for a very long time and this 
this has been a very um, change in something in life, especially in life. I was, um, you know, I wasn't really, when I was young, I wasn't really paying attention so much to this thing. I was like, oh God, why do you want to come here? This is not nothing to benefit me, but that as I grew up into this place, I know that they are beneficial things. And we as young people, I learned that um, condom use is very important and, you know, you need to be more aware that there is HIV condom and how, you know, help me to be more bold. I was more shy, you know, I didn't want to talk to somebody, come and talk to me about it. I was quite from the But coming to this place has helped me to be bring forward what I am really. It helped me to be bold, bold enough to stand anywhere and speak anything. My name is Jen Abrams, I'm 17 years old. My name is Joel Amsterdam. I have been associated with the friendly space for quite a number of years now, practicing since 2005. And um, from coming to the space, I think it has impacted on my life and forcing and other individuals who would have been coming to the space. You know, uh, at the friendly space, you come out here to be safe for it, you will be sad, but it's clear to be issues and how to solve and deal with your problems, among other things. My name is Kelly and Francis, and I've been an active member of the Friendly State for about oh, two years now. And I'm a member of the Sustainable Club Blighters as well, and the dance group. And my association with the space has impacted me and my life in terms of I can come here, I want to have work to do break off my stuff because I attend university here as well. I've been an active member of the friendly space for like three years, three and a half years now. Um, the workshops that I've attended have benefited my life. Via I have been able to interact with persons that encounter teenage pregnancy or people that live with HIV. I deal with them differently. I know how to interact with them. Currently, I'm um, preparing to write a CSEC examination. And the space, I've been a member of the space here for about two and a half years. It has contributed in helping me during my studies since, you know, a form student has to do SBA. And, you know, it's very hard getting one to print. They have helped me to print my SBA's assignments browse the internet and whatever information I need to get. Uh, the activities of the space, the youth program that they have, they have helped generously not only with me but for me to help 
and spread information to my friends about HIV and AIDS, how they you know um, their gender, all their abilities. Overall, we can see that the adolescent youth-friendly spaces are beneficial to young people. Lives have changed, negative behaviors were abandoned, and positive values were adopted. The adolescent youth-friendly spaces give each young person within the target communities an opportunity to mold a brighter future because everyone counts.